Alright guys, it's time to put together my Sonic Model HD Wing. I have it all laid out here on the desk. Um, this is the kit version, so you're going to need to supply yourself a motor and your servos and obviously your battery and your receiver. Um, now I have everything laid out here. Um, I like to make sure that we have everything before we get started. I put all my small parts into this little bin here. The one thing that the instructions do not go over is how to mount your motor. And so here's the mount, motor mount that is uh, supplied. I have a thousand, excuse me, I have a 980 kV motor. This is a 2209 multi-star motor. Uh, should do really well for this model. It's going to run on 3S. Um, if you don't have one of these little uh, motor mounts, this is what you'll need to mo mount the motor to the motor mount here. Now it doesn't say to glue these two halves together, although it would probably be pretty good. I might put a couple dabs of hot glue on it. One of the first tasks I'm going to do is get the motor mounted to the motor plate because we need to do this before installing it into the fuselage. Now this motor that I'm using, I'm going to need to use a motor mount right here that's going to screw to the back of the motor and this motor mount is going to be screwed directly onto the motor mount just like this. I'm going to mount it in a certain way so that the, the cables are going to go through the back of the motor mount here. you use screws that are not too long that are going to hit the windings of the motor because that will short out your motor. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take some of the four screws that came with the kit and go ahead and mount them onto this motor mount here. Now these are notoriously stiff and break very easily. So one thing you can do before you mount your motor mount is to actually coat this whole motor mount with super glue and that will actually help the stiffness of this uh, motor mount so it won't break. Okay, guys, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to widen out the um, screw holes because these are actually pretty fat screws. Alright, so there is my motor mount that's been coated over with super glue and now, like I said that's going to help to prevent this motor mount from cracking. All right, so now it's time to hot glue the motor mount in place. And if you guys can see here, it actually has a little bit of wiggle room in here. So it kind of goes this way and that way. I would suggest grabbing a level and uh, just making sure that you're getting the hot glue uh, and hold it in place uh, so that you are perfectly level. Um, I wouldn't really suggest putting any down thrust in it yet. You can always change that with these motor mounts here. All right, hot glue is in. Motor wires are facing down. I'm gonna hold this in place while I have my level here. Make sure that we're at perfect 90 degrees. And I can always put some hot glue around the edges in case I, I'd like to. Now this model, it doesn't show that you should actually use any um, hot glue, uh, gluing the two halves of the fuselage together. I think I might do that, um, but then it's gonna prevent me from actually being able to take it apart. Although I think it'll lend to its structural uh, ability um, to hold itself together here. So here we go. That's pretty much it there. And if I wanted to, I could actually just add a little bead of hot glue around here just to make the motor mount a little bit more stable. But it looks like it came out really nice. I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on the very back here on the top of the fuselage and maybe a couple of dabs on these little buttons here so that uh, it'll kind of hold the fuselage together. Okay, so we have basically have our fuselage here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put together uh, the wings and the uh, little wing joiners that are right here. So on the plastic wing hardware, it's pretty cool. It actually says right upper on the top so you don't get these confused. So this is gonna be, okay, we're gonna have the upper left. So guys, I hate screwing in screws, so this is my new electric uh, screwdriver. I'm gonna be doing a full review on this pretty soon, but it's motion detecting. So basically you push the button and you rotate your wrist 
faster one way or the other way just by rotating your wrist. Pretty cool. And it has a decent enough, enough amount, amount of torque to tighten these screws down. I do need to hand tighten and hand check everything afterwards just to make sure, but, um, but like I said, really nice. See that one right there? You barely needed any tightening. Okay, this next step is gonna be inserting these uh, vertical stabilizers uh, to the top of the wing. And what you gotta do is insert this into the wing and then this goes onto the top where this little, this little cutout is. And this goes to the bottom of the wing, which secures it. Uh, now it doesn't mention anything about glue or anything like that, uh, but I am gonna be gluing these into place just for safety's sake. Okay guys, so the fit on this is really nice. It just is gonna sit right in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue on the bottom of this um, winglet here, or this, this vertical stabilizer, and we will get this thing in place here. I'm just gonna keep it far away from the screw so that we don't mess up or interfere with that. So I'm just gonna place this in like so. English. Okay guys, so um, to secure the winglet, I'm just gonna use uh, my screwdriver to screw this down in. Should be ready to go. Oh, by the way, you can also use this screwdriver as a regular screwdriver too, just so you can just take things down. Okay, let's check this bad boy out. So there's a bunch of places for magnets that uh, are gonna hold down your front lid here. And there's also a, um, some skids that we're gonna be using for the bottom for uh, landing gear. So let's check this out real quick. And here is the front nose cone. It's gonna slide this guy on like that. Battery placement is gonna be up here in the front. So I would take this uh, parts tray and put a Velcro strap up here because that's gonna get the, the um, CG pretty close to, to the correct spot. Um, and that's not including the servos that are gonna be going into the wings, the weight of the servos going into the wings. Okay guys, going back in time here, I wish I would have placed this in and uh, glued it uh, before getting everything together. I'm gonna put, have to put some hot glue through it here, run this in and then push it down. It's not a big deal, but if I were to go back in time and do that, that's definitely what I would do. I'm just gonna put a bead of hot glue on every single one of these little ribs. I'll do it as fast as I can so I can get the uh, hot glue in there without it setting too quickly. Looks like there are some slots on the side if you wanted to not run this internally you can run it right through there through the bottom portion of the uh, of the foam there so uh, you might not need to place this here okay guys we are on to the servo horns and these are really nice these are slotted they're gonna insert right into the foam there's some nice uh, cutouts for everything so I'm gonna place this on the backing portion of the elevon and there's also a piece of foam here that's attaching the elevon keeping it perfectly straight so that when you get your servos in, it's gonna really help to keep that perfectly level as you're adjusting everything. All right, I'm just gonna switch this bit out for a slightly smaller one. So, there we go. Okay guys, so they do supply you with a plethora of magnets here. So these magnets are gonna be installed here and also down here on the nose cone to help uh, secure the nose cone in place. Um, so what you wanna do is make sure that you uh, know what side is the magnetic side and so that you're gonna be, <laughs> you'd be holding yourself on rather than repelling. Obviously you guys know about magnets, so. Um, I would recommend uh, using either hot glue or like some type of other EPO foam uh, glue that will help to uh, hold this in place. Now you're gonna do this for your nose cone and also your uh, top lid as well. I believe there's some spots on the side here for some of these side magnets as well. So um, these go in the back and it should keep you pretty well secured. And this also has a nice hole that you can grab inside of to pull this out uh, so you can de-seat it. Unseat it, de-seat it. All right.
guys, one thing I always do is I always write an O on the top of the magnet that's gonna be facing the other magnet so you don't get that repelling action. You wanna make sure that these are sticking to each other. And one thing that they did not do is they did not put a little notch here for the magnet to recess into. So I'm gonna just cut out the th same thickness of this magnet uh, so that um, so that it could be countersunk into the spot where I want it to. So. Okay. Let's let these dry and we go ahead and work on the back hatch. Okay guys, so I have my O's marked, so this is going to go back here on the back part of the hatch and I have a corresponding magnet to go with it, so let's go ahead and get these hot glued into place. So let's go ahead and pop the nose cone on, let's see what that looks like. There we go, it stays on pretty nice, comes right off. I know some people like to put tape over the top of these magnets because they are so strong. Sometimes it'll just pull it right out of the, um, the foam. So that's actually a pretty good thing to do. I might actually do that. Okay guys, one of the last things to do here is to install this little landing skid, which I am gonna do. Uh, this gives you a little bit of a purchase on the model so you can actually throw it really easily. Uh, I lost the other one in my car, I've got to go find it at some point, but they said to use contact cement, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just use a hot glue. And make sure you don't glue this to your front nose cone, otherwise you won't be getting your nose cone back off. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of hot glue here, just split it around here. Alright guys, so um, you'll notice that you have these little covers that get placed uh, about the model here. That's in case you want to be running any uh, video transmitters or anything like that. But if you're not going to be doing FPV, it's a good idea to just glue these guys back into place because otherwise you're going to have a little bit of air resistance um, running past these little seams and everything. Well, okay guys, that concludes the build of the kit version of the Sonic HD model. Um, it went together super, super quick. One thing I didn't like is that they weren't very clear about if you should glue the two halves of the fuselage together or not. It's not a big deal. I think if you were wanting to be a little bit more secure with the way that this thing goes together, is you should probably glue the two halves together. It would give you a much better, more secure motor mount. Now speaking of motors, I am going to be running this 960 kV motor. I could probably run a faster motor than what I have in here, but I'm going to try this to start with and see how it flies. It should be a really nice flyer. Everyone that I've ever seen review this model says it's a really great flyer, so I'm going to take their word for it. And it looks to me almost like my FX79 or my FX61. Same design, probably a little bit sportier because the wingtips don't come up so far. And it's really nice that they have the, the removable nose cones, and they actually give you two nose cones, in, at least in my kit they did. Uh, we can place our, my battery right up front here, and we've got the nice components bay, which is not going to hold much because your battery is going to be in the nose. But if you're going to be running FPV, it's a great uh, thing to do just to put your FPV components right in the inside there. I like that they give you all the magnets and it's just a really well thought out, well put together model. So stay tuned for the maiden flight of the Sonic HD from Banggood and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.